boom, we're there. Right, okay, cool. That's still a bit squiffy. That's a nuisance. That'll do. Fick it. Oh, no, no, that one's gone. Ah! It's all gone, Pete Tom. Right, never mind. We'll ignore it. Okay. Whatever. We will uh, just crop it slightly, I think. Uh, desktop audio on. We'll have a listen to that audio in a second. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do that now whilst I'm here on the secondary device. So it shouldn't get any feedback. No, that's too loud. Right, that's minus 26 decibels. That's more than reasonable. Excellent, superb, right, we love that. Brilliant. Right, so that's the audio we're done fiddle farted about. Uh, that needs to be locked in place. You are here. Ah, oh, hello, Rain! How are you? All good, I hope? Superb! Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. So, uh, do you fancy uh, having a game of Top Trumps? I shall explain. So, obviously, we've got the, uh, the the chat deck, and we've got my deck. Oh no, other way round. Got them backwards. I'm looking on there and I'm reversed, and I'm on there and I'm not. That's confusing the hell out of me. So we got the chat deck. Yes, delay. And then we got the dealer's deck. Right, so basically we got the two piles. So what I'm gonna do is from my deck, I'm literally gonna put a face down card. How's that looking? Probably need that screen up there, that'd be better. And then I'm gonna flip your card over, okay? So you have got the MB Vectrix. So you've got yourself, uh, basically, the higher the number we're looking for, the better. Uh, apart from year, which obviously, the older the console, the better. So it's aging years is the better number we're looking for. So if you want to give me a, uh, basically, any of the stats, whether that be the year, or the speed, the RAM, the units sold, the cool factor, that's completely subjective, I think. Uh, the library, the amount of games it had, uh, or the launch price, then by all means give me one of those in the chat and we shall pick and we shall see if you are a winner. You win, you get the card, you stack up your deck, you know, you get the entire deck, you win. It's just basically a bit of fun. Uh, I figured it was worth a bash. We want the launch price, so the Vectrix launched for $199. And we are against the Sega Dreamcast, which launched for £199. So that's a dead heat. That's a good start. Brilliant. Always love it when that works. So technically speaking, I think, I don't know, if they're, they should all be in pounds. I think that's a misprint. So in the event of a tie, obviously both of those go into the pile to be one. And we are now playing using the next two cards so the winner of the next one will win four cards rather than two so you now have the Sega Saturn the year was 1994 you've got a speed of 28.6 megahertz RAM of 4.5 meg uh, units sold 9.26 million uh, cool factor of five slightly underrated in my opinion but okay uh, library of 597 games damn uh, and the launch price of £399. Where is this? Pick us a number. Pick us a, pick us a thing. Uh, we, have, we have the library of 597 games. And I have the Nintendo Entertainment System, which had a library of 714 games. 
Oh, that was a hard one to come up against. You're going to have a hard time beating that one, uh, unless you use the graphics, of course. So, they now all go into my pile. And they will be mine from here on out. So, how was I doing this before? Do I remove them or leave them on the table? I'm going to remove them from there. Put them on that. And I'm basically not going to recycle them until the end, at which point I'll start shuffling. Uh, that blue is in the wrong place. That's slightly squiffy. Bear with me one moment, please, whilst I have a jigger jigger with this. So I'm going to pop that down just a couple of notches. I literally just had a test run of this last week, so this is a brand new setup from that. So that is why we're having a few teething issues. So you have the Amstrad GX4000, please let it be in the right place, no slightly higher now, against my unknown card, which should go about there. No, slightly over now. Cool. So the Amstrad GX4000 from the UK, launched in 1990. Aha, so that's what we're going with. The year is 1990 on the Amstrad. We are up against the Intellivision, which of course is 1979. We're looking for the older console. Again, I've picked up the victory. Tough luck, tough luck mid-ear. We'll have another go, let's have another go. So this time you have the Panasonic 3DO. We in frame? Would help if I looked at that one. Should have picked price. Yeah, you really should have done. Well, actually, uh, no, because you had the Amstrad. The launch price was 99 compared to an Intellivision 299. Let me just bring that up for you. Let me just bring that up so that should be clear. So yeah, you had the $99, uh, £99 and the $299. I'm not converting between dollars and pounds. We're just going with the figure. We're just literally going with the figure. The bigger number wins. Anyway, so uh, we are now with, like I said, the Panasonic 3DO. We launched in 1993, uh, speed of 12.5 MHz. Uh, I need to really put this on the bigger screen. This is really, I'm having serious issue working this out. I'm gonna try something different. Born welcome. Uh, by all means, keep chatting. Tell me what we're gonna pick. I'm just gonna see if I can't get my screen to look a bit better. So I can see what's occurring. Yeah, there we go. You can see the numbers quite clearly. That's superb. I can see the numbers quite clearly. It's just that I'm, I've got poor eyesight. I'm looking down at the cards rather than looking up at the screen because I've got my main screen in front of me so I can see everything big and proper. But I've got my actual laptop over here which is doing all the processing power. So I'm kind of on the fly with this, just really going with it. So I can now read that off the screen. So we keep looking down and being a bit more professional. So I can go through, I'm gonna say the year is 1993, the speed is 12.5 megahertz, RAM of three meg, sold two million units, cool factor of five, library of 286 games, launched at a whopping 699 US dollars. So, who's gonna pick me a category? Because I can see we've got units sold. Oh, that's me that's viewing now, that's me. I thought we had two pay it, but no, we've just still got you, Rain. We're all good. So, units sold of, why am I looking there? It's up there. Ugh. Two million units sold. Right against the Sega Master System. Yeah, 14.8 mil. Probably not the best of things you could have gone for, but uh, never mind, never mind. It's all fun and games, isn't it? I'm actually looking at you when you do that. No, I'm looking right over you. That's the problem. I've got to sort of try and. It is really hard to battle against. It's one of you know the best game consoles ever produced, um, despite obviously some reluctance to enjoy it these days. Let's do that, let's do that. I'm really gonna have to link that up to there so I can see it clearer. But there we go. You now have the Atari VCS. We are looking for a year of 1977. A speed of 1.19 megahertz. A RAM of 128 bytes. Units sold 26. 7.64 mil, cool factor of 9. I need to, no, it's that way. Right, another problem. I'm in the way. So I'm going to nudge that down ever so slightly. Nudge me down. Right, there we go. So I'm not quite in the middle. 
uh, yeah, library of 470 games, launch price of 179 UK pounds. My friends, please do pick us a category. We're going with the year uh, 1977. I think you might be onto a winner with this one. Ah, oh, no! I promise I shuffled these. Pong, dude, 1974. God damn, that was rough. That was rough, that one. Really thought you would have won that. I want to check the audio beforehand, but please do let me know if there's any audio glitches or any issues with that because I'm. Yeah, no, oh man, there's a, there's a massive delay between chat. But anyway, we're playing with it, we're playing with it. Hey, Denny, how are you? You okay? I'll tell you what, Denny, do you want to have a pick of the category? Uh, basically, we're looking for the biggest number, um, except for the year, which obviously, the lower the year, the better, because it's older console. Yes, we have the PC Engine. So, Denny, please do. Pick us, uh, we've got a year of 1987, a speed of 7.16 MHz, RAM of 72K, units of 3.9 mil, cool factor of eight, library of 650 games, launch price of $199. Pick us a winner. And of course, if Denny can't, then I'll refer back to Rain. Renesis, Ren, 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 No, that's fine, Daddy. It's not a problem. It's all fun and games. It's literally just pick what you think's the biggest number. Rain Rick thinks the, the library. Rain thinks the library. What do you think, Denny? You gonna go with the library? This is the problem with the lag. Library or launch price? I'll tell you what, there's a lot of them with 199, so I think we'll, we'll skew to the library of 650 games. We are up against the game.com, well, the game.com, which had a library of a whopping 20 titles. Jesus, monkey nuts. I have one of these, I still own it. It's goddamn awful. Congratulations, we've picked up the first win for the chat. Well done. Both of you working together on that one. That's really good. Right, let's see. So we got. Right, so. I'm going to leave this open to whoever wants to get in there first, I think. Budge that up a bit. So you are playing with the Sega Game Gear, the handheld console from Sega. Uh, launched in 1990, is that? That's having a bit of a. Oh, the Pixelated is having issues with my stream. Um. Speed of 3.5 megahertz, a RAM of 24K, units sold 10.62 mil, cool factor of 6, yeah, that's pretty reasonable. Library of 363 games, damn, that's good. And a launch price of 99 British pounds. What do we think? Who's going to jump in there and pick us a category? Units sold for Game Gear, not a problem. We'll go with the 10.62 mil for the units sold. We're up against the Nintendo Game Boy. God damn, I shuffled these poorly today for you. What's that, 118.69 million units for the Nintendo Game Boy. Damn. That is rough. That is a rough deal for you, man. Mate, it's just, oh, babes, seriously. Feel for you, it's rough. Right, there we go. That should be all in frame, so I'll turn that one over. We now have the Atari Jaguar. Yeah, no, absolutely. Sega, you know, they always had trouble with their hardware after the um, the Mega Drive. They just seem to lose it for some reason. No idea why, but they make fantastic software. Could be happier for them. Uh, so it's five to one. Uh, I, I wasn't keeping track, to be perfectly honest, but that's one two three four yeah five to one at the minute so 
Not a good run so far, but uh, like I said, it's all a bit of fun. All for a bit of fun. Anyway, I've now dealt you as the Atari Jaguar. Launched in 1993 with a speed. Jaguar doesn't look like a strong. No, it's a bit poor. Uh, speed of 26.59 megahertz. Launch price on this one, $249. I think that might edge it depending on what we get. These are our retro consoles. They go up to the Sony PlayStation if that helps. Um, uh, launch price, let's go with that. I like that. We've confirmed. Confirmed? What's it? Conferred and agreed in the chat. Launch price of $299. <laughs> you weren't going to beat it with speed, but they're. Uh, these are not marked. These are not marked cards. I guarantee you, this is just all shuffling. God damn. Oh, look at the state of that. I mean, there's no way you could have beaten it any way, shape, or form. There's literally. It's, it's the dud. Oh, you can beat it with age, of course. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. It really is. And, oh, yeah, only just, though. Flipping heck. Dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Right. The Nintendo 64. Okay, so with my poor shuffling, have a think about what this might be, based on your knowledge of consoles around that sort of era. But yes, the N64 from 1996, 93.75 uh, megahertz speed, 4 mega RAM, 32.93 million units sold, cool factor of 7, a library of 389 games, with the launch price of 199 British pounds. I suppose there'd be more games for this for some reason, but then they were big chunky cartridges. It's not quite like, you know, the disc based systems where they could just spam any old rubbish and just throw it out there. So, uh, units sold maybe. That might be a good call. I'm going to go with that if there's no advances on units sold. Well, once. We can indeed use that in Nintendo's favour. We're going twice, going three times. We're going to go with units sold. Up against the Sega SG-1000 with only 2 million units sold. This is Sega's first console before the Master System, if you're unaware. At least, that is my understanding of it. <laughs> this was where coming, becoming an expert in these consoles would have been to my advantage. But I'm not here to do that, I'm here to just have a game. So, yeah, we've got a winner! Congratulations! Nicely done. That was the 8-bit console, the Sega console. Yes, that was. That was. The Sega SG was the 8-bit console. I'm glad you're keeping score. <laughs> I'm literally just stacking up cards until we run out. That's generally how I play. I don't, I don't take, yeah, tend to keep counts during trumps for myself. The Neo Geo Pocket Color, what a device, what a device. I need one of these really in my life. Apart from the fact that I have everything in the palm of my hands anyway these days. But this awesome full color little bit of kit from uh, Neo Geo, brilliant. Year was 1999, 9.21 megahertz, 16K of RAM, 2 million units sold. Cool factor of six, nah, that's far too low. It's gotta be cooler than that, but We'll go with what the card says. Library of only 83 games, I suppose that lets it down, but released at only $69. You'll be getting lucky to get one of those working at $69 these days. These things are awesome, absolutely awesome. Um, SNK Pocket Fighters, totally incredible on it, really. It just blew everything the Game Boy was doing out of the water. Cool factor of six. Let's go for it. We've no idea what we're up against. This could be really bad or really good. The Nintendo Famicom. Oh. Oh. Yeah, no, if you'd gone with the tech specs, we would have been better off there. But no, the Famicom has a cool factor of 8. And I, I would agree, the Famicom is a bit cooler than the Ageo Pocket Color, but only just. Only just. Yes, definitely very hard to beat the Famicom. Young yeah, one of those, what, the original Nintendo Famicoms? Or the Neo Geo Pockets.
the Under Famicoms. I I don't know if I like them. I, I definitely didn't like the Nintendo Entertainment System grey box. That was a bit dull. But the Famicoms are all a bit weird with the controllers sticking out the sides. And it just looks like unfinished to me. But each to their own. And if you enjoyed it and you thought it was beautiful, hey, who am I to say anything against that? You're cool. You enjoy it. We now have the Grandstand 5000 colour from uh, Taiwan. Yeah, uh, this is, I think it was a Pong clone. Um, I think it's Taiwan, isn't it? I'm sure that is the Taiwanese flag. Uh, but yeah, we're looking, uh, a unit sold is currently an asterisk. That is because there is no data. The official rules state that that's a win immediately if you call that but I think that's a misprint I think that's a lose I think units sold are probably more likely on the lower end of the spectrum so yeah I reckon with a library of 10 games a cool factor of three launched 29 quid with no hurts no bites and no record of units sold 1977 of the year might be the best way to go with this yeah I, I Going by the uh, the, the, the uh, knobs and the paddles, I would have thought that it would have been a Pong clone myself. I mean, especially considering, you know, there's literally nothing nothing there in the tech specs. Yeah, let's go with the year, 1977. Oh, the Sega Nomad! Ooh! Play Mega Drive games on the run. Beautiful system, but definitely, definitely a lot younger than its uh, Grandstand 5000 colour cousin. Wow. Who would have thought the Nomad would lose that to the Grandstand? Jesus. Nicely done, nicely done, right. I'm going to have to mark up on this table. Oh my god. 7-4, yeah, no, that's it, you know, you, you can make it a comeback, you know, absolutely. So this is the Bandai uh, Pladia. I can't remember who reviewed this, but I've seen someone review it. Um... It might have been Ashens. It, I've got vague recollection. No, uh, I'm thinking of Octavius reviewing something completely different. I've definitely seen it reviewed by someone, though. Uh, regardless, though, launched in 94 in Japan, 12 megahertz, 384k RAM. Units sold, where's no record off, so that counts as zero. Cool factor of four. I mean, it looks like that Hot Wheels PC. I don't know if you've ever seen that. You know, they had the Barbie PC and the Hot Wheels one. It looks like one of the Hot Wheels ones. Um, library of just 39 games and a launch price of $249. Uh, and that's what we're going for. I think we'll go with that. A launch price of $249 against the Atari 5200. Um, Was 1994 before they merged with Namco? Bandai Namco? I can't remember. It's been a while since I've had to worry about that sort of thing, but no, unfortunately, the Atari uh, 5200 was launched at $269. Wow. Wow, that's hard to think of that in 1982, that amount of money for that thing. It's a fantastic console, but damn, being an early adopter costs money. Oh. Let's see. And we've got ourselves. Specs wise, Pladia would have won, but you know. No, this is true. Absolutely would have trounced it. Absolutely. It's the luck of the draw, you know. You, you pick your thing. I think the big thing with Trumps is you get to learn the cards and then it's a lot easier to know what's definitely going to be bigger. Uh, I'm literally using the games consoles and the home computer versions because they're such uh, a thing for the retro you know, gaming community that I figure it gives everyone a bit of a background knowledge and a bit of a chance to have a bit of a leg up on the competition, as it were, me, the cards. Um, but you know, it is what it is and it's all a bit of fun. So. We are looking at the Fairchild, the Channel F version. I don't know if that makes a blind bit of difference. I've not looked into the Fairchild myself. It was launched in 76, uh, 1.7 megahertz, 2K of RAM, only 250,000 units sold, cool factor of 4, library of 27, and $169 at launch. Um, 
yeah, it's weird. It's one of those that I've heard of. Um, yeah, Year sounds like a good call. It's. I think it may have been a Lazy Game Reviews that mentioned it before, but again, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do some research and have my notes ready for in future. But Year launched. Oh, look at this! The Bitcoin Game Eight. Look at that thing. Dear, oh dear, state of this thing. I have one of these somewhere. God knows if it works anymore. But it was, think of, um, you know the pop stations that Ashens does, the LCD games. It's a step up from that. It's like really bad rip-off bootlegs of existing NES games. No, it wasn't even that. They were Game Boy, no. Really awful Game Boy games because it was black and white, I'm sure. But yeah, I actually have one of these, and I had like three games for it. It was dreadful, but I loved it. <laughs> so anyway, yes, you have won that. Fairchild has beaten out the uh, the game eight. Congratulations! Oh, the Magnavox Odyssey. Oh yes. There we go. Launched in 1972. Zero hertz, zero bytes, 350,000 units sold. A cool factor of 10, I believe that's the maximum. Because I think this is classed as like the, the console. Uh, library of only 28 games, most of which were all the same game, <laughs> if I remember rightly. And uh, $99 at launch. Um, definitely two options to go for here. I'm not sure if there is a games console that we had that was earlier than 72, but... Uh, that cool factor is definitely going to be hard to beat. That's, that's what I'm thinking, Denny. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's definitely one of the first consoles are, as far as I remember. Um, so I presume that's why it's, you know... I don't think it's the first. I think it's credited as the first, but I'm not sure it is. Uh, is, is, that a, uh, is that a vote for going for the year? Denny, or are we leaving this up to uh, Renesis? What are we going to pick? What are we going to pick? We're willing to bet on gear. Let's go for it. 1972, the Magnavox Odyssey up against... Oh, the Watara Supervision. Jesus Christ, look at the state of this thing. Look at the state of this. Yes, thank you very much, Denny. We appreciate that. Sorry about the delay. I, you know, didn't mean to ignore you. Um... Yeah, so 1992, this handheld little device, basically like the Game 8. Um, oh, I can't remember what... Uh, Singapore and Thailand, they're, they're the ones being represented here, but I'm just getting confused. Again, I need some notes on this. Learning process. But yeah, you have won the Magnavox Odyssey being the granddaddy of them all, as it were. Congratulations. The Super Nintendo Entertainment System is your card. I think we might be on to a winner here. Uh, although, you know, a year of 1990, 3.58 MHz, 192K RAM, 49.1 million units sold is pretty good. Cool factor of 8 is a pretty solid one. And a library of 783 games is pretty solid too. Uh, launch price of 149 quid, maybe not on the most, you know, expensive of sides, but. I think you've got a good chance here if you play your cards right, as it were. Units sold, cool factor, and live calls, I think. Yeah, I absolutely wholeheartedly agree. All three of those are pretty solid uh, numbers, I think we're looking at. Uh, anyone else want to jump in? Put their two cents in, as it were? Go with library. Sounds like a plan to me. Any further advances on library? 783 games we're going for. The Atari Lynx. Oh, we trounced it. Absolutely trounced it. 74 games. Look at the state of that. Look at that. You could have absolutely beaten that apart from year. Oh, no. And the speed of it. The Lynx was actually... The Lynx was faster? Damn! No wonder it ran through batteries like no one's business. Jesus. Oh, and the launch price as well, because it's a handheld beefy thing. Oh, well, there you go. Again, we're winning well with Nintendo. 
it's eight. Is it eight seven? Uh, again, I'm not really paying much attention. Let, let's, let's have a quick count through. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. You have six for the chat, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, six. Eight, six, neat. Yep, yeah, definitely. You're definitely catching up, that's for sure. Once Now we're getting the feeling of the game. We are definitely making progress. So, the NEC PCFX. Yeah, this is a bit of a beast, isn't it? I, I'm not overly familiar with it. Um, but if I remember rightly, it was a beast of a machine. Especially for 1994. 21.5 MHz, 4.51 MHz. Only 400,000 units sold, so it's costly if you ever want to buy one of these things. Cool Factor 6, library of just 62 games, but a launch price of 499 US dollars. Damn! If these were all, uh, just also, just so you know, if all of these were Japanese game uh, games exclusives or, you know, other uh, territories exclusives, they've all been, you know, uh, what's the word? Not translated. Uh, converted. All the prices have been converted to US dollars, I, I believe, for the sake of... It did say on the thing it was all to be converted to localizers. I don't know. I'm... Gone. Gone. Me, 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 train of thought's just gone. We've gone with launch price. Launch price. Launch price. It, there we go, launch price. I think so. That's a bit of a beefy one. Let's say we have... Oh my goodness gracious. The... What's that? The Bally Astrocade. Yes, it won't take much to break me. I'm live streaming and I sound like an idiot. It's not going to take much to break me. Um... But yeah, no, this thing, look at the state of this thing. It's, uh, I think this was a step up after the Pongs. It's, oh, no, because it was the um, Asteroids. It was bringing Asteroids to the uh, the home, wasn't it? But uh, yeah, launched 299 US dollars. I think that's a winner for the NEC PCFX. Congratulations, chat, you are a winner. All right, what we got, what we got? Can I get this in frame? we go, the affiliates video page. I missed out on that meet. I did think it immediately after I said it. I thought, oh, God damn, I could have said a winner is you. But never mind. Never mind. I'll hand in my um, my game a card later. Don't worry. Uh, this looks... Is this Thailand? Or is this Russian? I can't remember which way up the flags go. Any of uh, the vexologists in the chat, feel free to jump in and correct me on these. <laughs> but the here... It's the Netherlands. Of course it is. Thank you. Idiot, aren't I? Yes, feel free to say it. Uh, yes, the year is 1978. 1.79 megahertz, 192 bytes of RAM, 2 million units sold, a cool factor of 3. Just 60 games released for it, 149 quid on launch. Um, I know nothing about this console. Absolutely zip. Uh, anyone want to update me and tell me anything quickly in the chat? You're more than welcome to. Always happy to learn more. It looks like it's got a full function QWERTY keyboard and it looks like there's a buttload of function buttons. It doesn't look like there's a fire button on the controllers. It looks like it's literally just really flimsy, flimsy joysticks. Could be interesting. This sounds like the best bet because you might have a Nintendo under your card. Oh, that's very true. You start pushing anything else and yeah, I could break out like... What have, what have we not had? I think the Game Boy Colour's in here. So yeah, I think let's go for a year. 1978 is a fairly solid year. Considering we've like got three decades to play with. The Apple Bandai Pippin. Oh, good call. Good call there. Yeah, Famicom, Game Boy, NES, NES are already out. I think the Game Boy Color's still in here somewhere. And I think the, don't think the GameCube's in here. So that's safely ruled out. 
But uh, yeah, the Apple Bandai Pippin with its boomerang controller. Jesus Christ. State of that thing. Good call on going for a year though, because uh, I know it, the Pippin only sold 40,000 units. I suppose the uh, Philips Video Pack must have um, sold quite a few units across Europe then, I was unaware of. Well, there we go. Congratulations. The winner is you. I remember it that time. Oh, we're even Stevens. Even Stevens. Okay. The Bandai Wonder Swan to pull forward. Uh, if I remember rightly, this was a black and white console late in the day as a cheap alternative to the Game Boy. Uh, released in 99, 3.07 megahertz, 64k of RAM. 1.55 million units sold. Uh, I suppose because it was cheap, because Cool Factor 7, 103 games, none of which I could name you, uh, and £25 at launch, which is ridiculous. Even at 99 stand, you know, 1999 stand, is that ridiculous for a handheld console. I swear to God, this must be like subpar Game Boy games. If I remember rightly though, you could control it in either orientation, either horizontally or vertically. So you could have the, the, almost like a twin stick with the uh, the D-pads, or horizontally and have two buttons and the up, down, left, right, which seems odd. Because surely you just have it vertically and have four buttons. But then at the same time, I'm thinking this is programmed with a lot more intelligence than what I'm expecting. It's, it's a simple machine. At that price, it bloody well have to be, because there's no way in hell this thing had any guts in it at 19.99. At least comparing it to like the Game Boys and the Sega Nomads. Units sold: 1.55 million units sold. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. Uh, so I think we'll go with units sold up against the SNK Neo Geo. Oh, that was a good call. It's it's yeah. Yeah, it is definitely, compared to something like this, I mean, the awesomeness of the Neo Geo system. Oh my goodness, but so few bought because it was such an expensive bit of kit because it literally ran arcade ROMs. Ah, oh. This is something I want personally, which I'm never going to get because it's far too much money. But congratulations, yes, the Wonder Swan trumped out the SNK Neo Geo AES. Wow. That's got to be a first, surely. Has that pulled you into the lead, chat? Yeah, don't show off. Come on, we've still got a while to go yet. <laughs> right, what we got, what we got? You have the ColecoVision. Oh, look at this. Retro, retro. 1982. Come on, get on screen. Right. Speed of 3.58 megahertz, 17k of RAM, 2 million units sold, which I think we've come across is quite good. Uh, cool factor of 5, 142 games in the library, which ain't nothing to sniff at, and lost 179 US dollars. Come on, we're going to pull away with this. We're going to pull away. What we're going to pick, ladies and gentlemen? By all means, jump in. It's not just Rainus is playing. Anyone can jump in. Uh, quite accessible console, I have to say. Yeah, no, it's, you know, it's fairly dynamic. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, a good price at 1982. You know, that is a nice launch price. Absolutely, you know, fantastic. And, you know, it's the, the knob on the top of it was quite good. Yeah, the library's not bad. We've seen better, but I, th I think unit sold is probably a good call. And then the numpad thing, uh, they, the Intellivision, their sequel was quite good as well. But I don't think it's sold as well. Up against, oh, the Mega Drive. You was not going to win this unless you went for year. And even 82 was still a bit of a push. But yeah, no, the Sega Mega Drive. Oh, look at that. Look at those stats. I've got to stop doing that because I'm cutting myself off. The Have. Uh, was the Clear Vision that had voice modulator? Oh, that rings a bell. 
No, no, no. You definitely respect all losing the Mega Drive. I think you might be right, Denny. It may have had the voice modulator in it. It might have been an expansion pack. I, I don't know whether it was built in or whether it was one of those you had to get the... No, that was the um, the Commodores. That was one of the... Um, I'm thinking of the home computers. The ColecoVision may have had the built in. I'm not sure. That's one of those things we're going to have to go and research. Um, can't do it just yet because I'm in the middle of the game. Uh, but yeah, no, Mega Drive. Freaking awesome. No, no shame in losing to that. Uh, no, the Intellivision was a separate console. Um, we've not come across it. I'm sure it's in here. Or was that a separate computer? I've def definitely... It's, what we had there was definitely not the Intellivision. Uh, let me just have a quick shift through and make sure we haven't already gone through it. Just out, just out of interest. Purely out of interest. I mean, I know I, I could literally have looked this up and gone, yeah, I know, it's the one with the uh, thing. When the time I'm doing this, but you know. That's what I decide to do. It's my stream, damn it. Angry Video Game No Nations videos. <laughs> uh, I have a little bit of research on my own, but uh, yeah, they are my go-tos. Now, here we go. The Intellivision definitely did not have a voice modulator because I had one of these things. It had a little disc instead of a knob and it was really interesting. But, uh, oh, no, that way. Uh, we've got my left and right, it's right, wouldn't it? So, yeah, we were looking at the ColecoVision. Oh, the ColecoVision was actually a, um... It came after the Intellivision? Really? That would make sense with the wood grain. Uh, so I've had these backwards for a while then, obviously. But yeah, no, the Intellivision came first, and then it was the Coleco. So yeah, the Coleco must have had this voice modulator, and the Intellivision was before. Shows what I remember. Right. Let's solve that anyway, that's for sure. I'll have to shuffle these before we go again. Uh, so we're down to the last two cards before we start recycling the decks. So these are the last two cards for us to see. And you are looking at the Amiga CD32. Okay, launched in 93, 14.18 megahertz, 2 mega RAM, only 100,000 units sold, cool factor of 4, 183 in the library, 291 pounds at launch. What do we think? What do we think? See, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking. Maybe we didn't have the Game Boy Color in this deck at all. I'm sure we did, but obviously not. Maybe I was hoping for it. I'm a bit confused with like, uh, the Wonder Swan and the, uh, the SNK Neo Geo Pocket. It's difficult, it's difficult. Launch price at £291 seems fairly solid. A library of 183 games is not to be sniffed at either. 2 Mega of RAM could be out several of the older consoles, but I think we've seen most of them. What do we think? Ladies, gentlemen, in betweens, unbeknownst, in betwixt, what do we think? How will the Amiga CD32 trump what I have left here on the left? Anyone going to take a punt? Doesn't matter if you get it wrong. Launch price, maybe. We're going with it, Denny. £291. The Philips CDI. God damn. So, okay, there isn't the uh, Game Boy Colour in this thing. I misremembered. £649 at launch price. Jeez. That is rough. That is rough. All right, so what I'm going to quickly do is I'll keep going for about another 15 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my deck and shuffle them so it's all fair. So I'm not literally just going to pull out the one straight in order and we're going to keep going. Awful shuffling because I don't want to mess up these cards. I should really get another pack of these so I can keep one pristine. These are really good. Available from the Centre of Computing History shop. Uh, designed by 8-Bit Kick. Uh, I forget his name on Twitter, but I have linked it in my, um, as I'm sure everyone knew, 
much that's how I've spotted this. And um, yeah, you know, these are really, really fantastic cards. Like I said, they also do the home computer cards, which are really cool as well. Doing the old uh, Sinclair Spectrums and the BBC Micros and the Dragons, the Amigas, Commodores, etc., etc., etc. So, we're fairly even. We're not going to go through the whole deck again. We'll keep going for about 15 minutes and have a bit of fun. So, oh, did I give that game away? Nearly gave the game away. Okay, that's fine. Cool. So, your first card, chat, is the SG-1000 produced by Sega. Which was their first console, the 8-bit console. The year was 1983, with 3.58 MHz of speed, uh, RAM 3K, 2 million units sold, which we now know is a pretty solid number, call factor 6, library 97 games, £41 at launch, which, 83 Still pretty good. It's a pretty good price. Anyone want to have a stab at this one? I don't actually recall many of the games. They were all arcade ports from what I believe, because that was the idea, was to bring the arcade games home. But they were really... It, I'm surprised it sold 2 million units, but then I suppose if it was one of the first in Japan, it would have sold quite a fair bit. They just didn't get the worldwide release that you'd expect of games consoles these days. Have we run dry chat? Is everyone's internet disconnecting? We're having issues. Anyone can join in. Literally anyone watching, more than welcome. Pick us a category. Year we want the older year. Uh, so basically we want the older console to win. Everything else we're looking for the bigger value. So if you were to pick year, and my card were to be uh, newer, it would lose and you would win the, uh, the hand here. Launch price is reasonably small compared to most consoles. The library is fairly small as well, being less than 100. Cool factor of 6 is not too bad, but it's about average. Uh, units sold or year. Anyone want to help Denny make a decision on this one? Units sold all year. 83 is a fairly solid year, considering there are three decades from which it, these cards are based with. Goes all the way up to the Sony PlayStation. Uh, and units sold 2 million. That's a fairly respectable amount of units to be sold. Denny, I think you're playing this by yourself now. I don't know what happened to Rain Assist, but they seem to have uh, made a exit. And if I'm going to be the only person who messes up, there's no messing this up. It's all fun and games. Don't worry. It's all good, good fun. Nothing's on the line. We're literally chilling, having fun, playing top trumps because I can't go and see everyone and play in person. I know there's other people watching. I can see the viewer count going up and they're not commenting. I don't know why they're not joining in, but they're more than welcome to sit and watch and look. That's more than welcome. I don't know if, but uh, you know, something could have happened. Rain, rain's popped up. You know, I had to go to the toilet, I had to go get something to eat. Who knows? Not gonna argue, not gonna question. But if anyone wants to jump in and help Denny, please do. I definitely need to schedule one of these and get people involved and get people invested because I think a few more people bantering in the chat would help this immensely. But hey ho, such is life. Whilst everyone's deciding, I'm actually, no, I'm not gonna, f oh, no, no, no. I was gonna do the chat because at the minute it cuts off. Mind you, the spaces between the, uh, the chat messages they're quite small compared to the actual font size. It's something I'm going to have to live with. I'm just going to have to ignore it. <laughs> I'm a perfectionist. I have to just like force myself to ignore these things. Uh, for those of you who are joining us and don't know what's going on, never played Trumps before, we are basically comparing these two cards. We've got uh, games consoles from the past, 
we're looking at uh, the year, which we're looking for the older console to win, but everything else, speed, RAM, units sold, cool factor library or launch price, we're looking for the bigger figure. That will win. Uh, if you do that, you win the card, and technically by the end of the game, the winner is the person with all the cards, but I'm not going to play that long today. Uh, the cards themselves are from the uh, Centre of Computing History store, designed by 8-Bit Kick. Um, £10 a pop, uh, come in a fantastic little uh, retro uh, tape case, which is fantastic. I love these things, and to have cards in them is keeps them really well protected and really good. They also produce the, uh, the home computer trumps as well, which are pretty good, I have to say. Uh, my big issue is I've got no one to play them with, because my kids are like, they just about understand what the Playstations were. Uh, so, yeah, a bit before their time. But mind you, you know, I wasn't born until 86, so the, the Sega SG-1000 is before my time. It just so happens that I'm old enough to research these things and be a complete nerd about them. Anyone, anyone, we've got units sold or year as proposed to win this round, this hand. Someone, pick me a winner. Pick me something in the chat. I need one word, unit or year. That's all I need, all I need to take. We'll advance on. We all got to sleep. Have I bored everyone to tears? It's entirely plausible. I haven't got a clue. I've lost viewers. They've obviously lost interest or they've lost internet. Anyone? Anyone want to join in? Anyone want to jump in? Okay, I'm literally, literally, literally going to give it, uh, I've been live for 52 minutes, I'm going to roll up to 55 minutes. Uh, if I'm sat here talking to myself, then up until that time, I think I'm going to call it quits and decide that no one is actually playing anymore, which is fair enough. I've had fun. It's been an, nearly an hour out of my life of just basically playing Top Trumps live on stream. Thank you, Denny. Really appreciate you jumping in. Sorry to put you on the spot, my dear. So let's try units sold at least. Two million. The Atari Pong machine. Look at that. Only 200,000 units sold. Nicely done. Denny, if you'd like to call that quits here, I'm more than happy to call it quits here so you're not put on the spot anymore and don't feel obliged to join in. Don't worry. I... I that's cool. I mean, I, I, I will carry on if you're more than happy to play still. Absolutely, you know. I'll tell you what, I'm going to lay out the next two cards. You decide whether you want to play on or not, or whether we call it quits, because you are literally the only person left playing, so it's down to you what we play and how we play for the minute, so... Let's see, can I get this in frame? You have the Grandstand 5000 colour. That in frame, a bit more further up. I have to say, everyone is so sweet. I really, really appreciate everyone that comes and follows me on, um, on Twitter. Uh, follows me here on Twitch. Everyone has been so lovely. I've been really lucky to find such wonderful people to spend my time with, and I really appreciate it. You know, even if you're not interacting, even if you don't talk, even if you're just watching, it's all appreciated, and I love it fantastically so very much. So, we're coming up to nearly the hour. Denny, if you'd like to pack it in, please do tell me. Anyone want to join in, feel free, and I'll spur myself on for a few more minutes a few more hands but we're looking at the grandstand 5000 color the year was 1977 the speed and ram was zero because it's literally binary from what i understand it's the old uh yeah is that taiwanese or singapore i can't remember but yeah it's the old pong clone uh cool factor of three library of just 10 games launch price of 29 quid yeah, unless you're going up against the Magnavox Odyssey, I think the years. Yep, Denny, not a problem. Calling it the last one. 
The year was 1977. Ah, would you, Adam and Eve it? Would you like to do the tiebreaker, Denny? Go on, push us for the tiebreaker. By all means, anyone else jump in and say, yes, we're going this, one more, we're going to do the tiebreaker. Save Denny from my torment of top drums. Let's do it, let's do it. Ah, oh, I knew you would be up for it. The Sega Nomad. Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful bit of kit. Playing Mega Drive games on the go from 1995. Speed of 7.67 MHz. RAM of 136K. 1 million units sold. 6 cool factor. 897 games. 897 games in the library. $180 at launch. Denny, come on. I've not been keeping score, but I think this at least even us up, if not push you ahead. With the four cards available on the table, pick me a winner. Anyone else watching, feel free to jump in. Pick us it. Even throw me a colour. You could throw me a colour and I'd still accept it, by all means. Colour, a word, what are we going to pick? Anybody, for the final time, Ram or Year? Maybe Ram, I really don't know. That's not what I would have gone for, but okay, Ram or Year? Uh, considering we've got consoles from the 1970s and 1980s still in the decks, and I won a few of those, if you want to go for either of those two, I recommend Ram. 136k could beat up quite a lot of the older, really, really old consoles. So I, I reckon you'd probably be a winner on RAM, personally speaking. Again, there's no pressure. It's literally just a bit of fun. Just pick me a category and I will be absolutely happy. Doesn't particularly matter. Or you can fold and throw the cards in. Let's do RAM. Let's do RAM for the final time today. The RAM of the Sega Nomad 136K up against the Bandai Pladia with a RAM of, unfortunately, 384K because it's a disc-based system rather than a cartridge-based system. Denny, thank you very much for helping me through this. This was fantastic. I first popper full stream playing Top Trumps. It's been absolutely brilliant. Thank you for joining me. Thank you to Rain Assist for joining earlier. I don't know what happened to them, but never mind. I'm sure they'll be back, and I'm sure they're fine. Uh, really, I really appreciate this. Uh, thank you for coming out. Uh, and I've now got to decide, is is it worth me trying to log back in and work out on the stream manager? Yes, it is. Right. Is anyone live that we can raid with my few number of people? No, seriously, Denny, I really appreciate it, you know? There is nobody live at the minute. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Glad you had the time. Unfortunately, I can't raid anyone because no one's live. But really appreciate you being here. And hopefully, if I schedule this, we can have a lot more people and have a lot more fun. Uh, although I do need to edit the stream info next time because it still looks like I'm trying to play Wreckfest, which I'm not. Hmm. Never mind. All right. Well, take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'm sure I will see everyone on the Twitterverse, if not back here soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.